Everybody's looking good. Looking good. Does anybody notice any kind of smell in here? You think you like that? No, not so much. Me neither. Uh, I wanted to address that. We're not on fire. We're not burning up or anything like that. We think we found what the problem is. We've got it addressed, so you don't need to worry, but it's going to take a while for that pleasant scent to, to get out of the building. So try to relax. Just enjoy uh, God's Word. Enjoy singing hymns to God. You know, the way I look at things like that is I believe there's times, and I believe this with all my heart, that Satan tries to distract us from what we're here to do. And I do believe that. This started happening this morning. We had some other chaos happening. I believe with all my heart, and I'm going to address this in a few minutes, Satan doesn't want this message preached this morning. There's been certain things that have been happening in my life that have tried to prevent me from preaching. And so pray for me this morning. And I mean that very honestly and earnestly. Pray for me because this one's going to be a tough one. Pray for me. Pray for our church. We need this message. It's from the Lord. In the meantime, I would ask you to relax, enjoy, and just worship this morning. Be in the presence of the Lord. Be in the presence of the Lord. I do have one quick announcement that I need to make uh, related to ladies' Bible study tonight. Normally, we meet in the, they meet in the fellowship hall, but we, we may have a technical issue. And so, Nancy, can I speak to you for just a minute? I know you're running that one tonight, the ladies' Bible study. Brandon, young Brandon, has a solution. That's what I love about Brandon. So we're going to get together right after um, uh, services this morning, and then ladies, just be on the lookout as you come tonight. We'll direct you where you need to be. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you. Thank you so much for blessing us so abundantly. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your safety. Thank you, Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who you sent to die on the cross. For our salvation, Father, we just give you all the praise. We cannot thank you enough for that. And this morning, we come before you, Father, to sing praises to you, to worship you, Father, to learn more about you. And I just pray this morning that you would pour out your spirit among us. Allow us to feel your presence. Allow us to be in your presence, Father, as we worship. These things I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand? Ten thousand reasons for my 
sings like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Sing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing this with us. Praise the Lord, the Almighty. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is Thy scripture I'm reading James 1 uh, 17 through 27 every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow in the exercise of his will he brought us forth by the word of truth so that we would be kind 
we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, in humility receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. But prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. So the question is, do we listen and not hear? And do we hear, but do not do? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to come to your house and worship you, Lord, to feel your presence, to stand here before you, Lord, and just uh, bask in your glory and offer you all of our worship. We thank you, Lord, for these tithes and offerings. We ask you to bless them to further your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Good morning, good morning. 
as you can tell, I'm not Bill, so <laughs> Bill, hey. But uh, of course, we're slack again on our choir, so we're uh, pulling audible, and we're going to be singing a congregational song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. We stand. So before we get started with our family corner, uh, we always want to open with prayer. And I don't know about you, but it just seems like there's always something else, you know, that's happening in my life. Whether it's sickness or whether it's just the stresses of life, it seems like there's always something, always something that's weighing on my heart. And that's why it's so important that we go to God in prayer. But sometimes, I don't know about you, but when I pray, I can get frustrated because I'll pray and I'll pray about one specific thing, and it doesn't seem like God is listening. It doesn't seem like he's answering that prayer. But I want to remind us something that God reminded me of. In Matthew 5, Jesus was teaching about how to pray. And in Matthew 5, verse 16, he's given an example of how to pray, and it says, pray this, pray your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when we pray, we need to not just pray for the things that we want or what we think we want, but pray for God's will to be done. Because his will may be different than what we want. And so as we pray this morning, remember that we should always pray for God's will because he knows much more than we know. And his way is better than our way. And so we want to remember some people this morning. We want to remember Miss uh, Janet Reinhardt. She's um, not doing well, so we want to remember her in prayer, and I know there's many others, um, so let, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come to you and to pray, and Father, we just pray that you will be with all those that are sick and all those that are hurting, and, and God, even in this time, you know, there's still this, this virus that is going around that a lot of us may have forgotten about, and maybe our prayers have slacked up about a little bit, but God, it's still affecting people, so we pray for all those that are affected with that, and we pray for those in our church that are just sick. Father, we pray that you will be with them, and God, that 
in all things your will will be done. And be with us now as we seek to learn a little bit more about you and our family corner. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so to start off with our family corner, I'm excited because I'm going to pick on two people I have not picked on yet. So, Miss Ella, Miss Abby, they're going to come up. And so, I mentioned just going through things in life earlier that, you know, you struggle with. That kind of reminded me of being tempted. And so, I have these pieces of rope, and this is going to represent temptation going through struggles in life. So, I'm going to put these... On you, Abby. So here's the rule, okay? You can't just slip these off. They're loose, but you can't slip them off. All right, so we're going to put them. All right, so we're going to. So as you can see, they're connected. All right, so can y'all try to get, like, untangled? Without taking them off your wrist, can you get untangled from each other? So they're, they're stuck pretty good. So, I mean, I don't even think I could just break this. So they're, they're stuck. All right, in life sometimes... We can feel like we're stuck by the things that are just coming at us. See, in life, we have this enemy called Satan, and he likes to tempt us. Now, it could be he tempts us with wanting to lie so we don't get in trouble. I'm humming again, but that's okay. Miss Billy will fix me. So he may try to tie us up with wanting to lie. I'm really buzzing. There we go. All right. So he'll tie us up with that temptation to lie, or maybe it's, not listening to our parents, or maybe it's some other temptation, but he'll tie us up and he'll get us stuck where it doesn't look like there's a way out. And today in our message, Pastor Jeff's going to be talking about this guy named Samson. You might have heard about him, but he was tempted by this lady named Delilah, and tempted and tempted, and he just kept getting wrapped up and wrapped up, and finally he gave in. But God doesn't want us to give in to temptation. There's a verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So what y'all don't know is I've told Abby and Ella beforehand how they can escape this without taking these off of their wrists. So let's see if y'all can do it. All right. Look at that. So there is always a way out when we're tempted. It may be more and more temptations that compound on us, but there's always a way out. So remember that this morning as Pastor Jeff comes. I want to know how he did that. I was watching closely and I still didn't see it. One of the days, uh, one of these days, maybe Brandon will share all of his little secrets with me. I don't know. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, I just pray, pray that you be with us this morning. Father, I pray that you be with me this morning. Father, I need you. I need you more than ever to share this message. I can't do it on my own. I just can't. Father, I pray that you would open every heart that they would hear from you. Whatever words are spoken, may they be yours. May they be true. May they be powerful. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I have been struggling this week. I uh, have been under attack. My wife has been under attack. My family's been under attack. And it's not pleasant. Not by anybody in this world, but in the world beyond. This morning, we're going to talk about Samson. But as we're, as we're talking, I need you to listen closely 
to some symbolism that is in this passage and the secondary meaning perhaps that it may have and I'll try to point those out where I can you see this week I, I started off like any other week seeking what God would have me to preach on and I identified it pretty quick let me change that he revealed it pretty quick and I, I was ready to take on this task. And s something happened Wednesday night that w was disturbing to me. A and I'm going to have to explain why as I tell you the story. Because it may not seem like that big a deal. But it was. You see, I, I came up here Wednesday night for a meeting. We had Bible study at 6 o'clock. We had a meeting scheduled for 5. And so I got up here. Kelly came up here with me. Parking lot was empty. Except for Miss Sue. Miss Sue was here already. But I know Sue's car. I knew any other car that would pull up that was showing up for the 5 o'clock meeting. And as I was walking in, I saw a car pull up down yonder. Not the lower level, but right outside this door. They pulled up longwise across several spots. And she got out, and her dog got out. And I wanted to see what was going to happen, so... I quickly walked inside the building and I came over here to the conference room door to peek outside. And this woman tells her dog to come up in our yard and do his thing. And I'm not talking about sprinkling the water, I'm talking about the other. And I thought she would come up and clean it up. But she didn't. She looked at me and waved and smiled and walked off and got in the car. That bothers me. It bothers me a lot. You see, I think that is symbolic of the way this world looks at God and God's house and God's people. I don't know how somebody can do that. I don't see how anybody in their right mind could do that. And it may seem like a little thing, but it's not. It's a big thing. In my heart, in my mind, in my soul, it's so symptomatic of everything that's going on in this world. You see, the church is being chastised for what we believe in. The people are being chastised for what we believe in. Every week, it seems like there's a new battle. Every week, it gets to be fatiguing. Every week, it seems like more and more believers are saying, maybe it's not that big a deal that we should do that, whatever that is. I know people in this sanctuary that have given in. I know some people that used to be in this sanctuary that have given in. And I don't know why. I'm not talking about virus stuff. Please don't misunderstand me on that. I'm talking about what is right, what is wrong, according to God's word. There's those that would say, maybe we just need to give in. 
can't do that. I won't do that. No matter how hard things get. And they got pretty bad this week. You see, Satan is playing what I refer to as the long game. He's playing chess, not checkers. Checkers is a simple fast game. Chess, you have to have strategy. Chess, you have to sometimes sacrifice something small to get something large. Churches are giving in to small things. Churches are giving in to small things that will lead to bigger things. You see, it wasn't that long ago you read the Bible in school. I don't see that anymore. It wasn't that long ago that you saw the Ten Commandments everywhere you went in federal buildings, state buildings. I don't see that anymore. They're taking away the small things to get to the big things. There's a pastor that said something this week. He said, every time you add something else to Christianity, you end up with that other thing. And that other thing isn't the way we believe. Said differently, every time you take something away from Christianity, it's that other thing. And that other thing is not the way we believe. Reminds me of the words that Satan spoke in the garden. Surely God didn't mean for you not to do that. Surely it's okay if you do this one little thing. Surely it's okay. But it's not. It's not at all. We have to be willing to fight the fight. I spoke to somebody this week that was going through a terrible spiritual battle. She recognized because of what she was trying to stand for in her belief. I thank God that she called me and we could talk about it. You see, we have to stand strong. We have to stand strong. You see, if, if you won't quit, God won't quit. If you won't quit, God won't quit on you. We need to take that seriously in this world and not give in to these little things that's corrupting every fiber of who we are as Christians. This morning, we're going to be in Samson, or I'm going, we're going to be in Judges looking at the story of Samson. I would ask you to go ahead and turn to the book of Judges. Old Testament, there's a lot we can learn from this story. If you don't know exactly where it is, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and then Judges. Judges, chapter 16. Judges, chapter 16, verses 15 through 22. Says, then she said to him, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me three times and still have not told me where your st great strength lies. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death that he told her, all of his heart and said to her no razor has ever come upon my head for I've been a Nazarite to God from, from my mother's womb if I'm shaven then my strength will leave me and I shall become weak and be like any other man when Delilah, Delilah saw 
that he had told her all of his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistine, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all of his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in her hand. Then she lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to torment him, and his strength left him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. And the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters, and he became a grinder in prison. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after he'd been shaven. Now, obviously, I've dropped us right, as, right in the middle of a, a story about Samson. A and we have to understand more about Samson and his story for us to really understand what is happening here. You see, Samson was a man of great strength. Great strength, yet weak morals. He made bad decisions all of his life. He was a judge over Israel for some 20 years. And he was a Nazarite from birth, actually prior to birth. He had certain rules that he had to follow as a Nazarite. In fact, his mother had to become a Nazarite in the midst of this. And his duty was to fight off the Philistines. Now, we have to understand what a Nazarite is to really get to the meat of this. A Nazarite, you, you can look back in numbers and see how that is defined. Truthfully, can be a man or a woman that's dedicated or devoted to God. And they illustrated this with outward signs, outward things that they did. They could not drink alcohol. They could not go around a corpse, a dead body, even if it was their own family. If somebody died within your family, you couldn't be around them. And then lastly, to not cut their hair. To not cut their hair. And so we see Samson, who has very long hair and these these outward symbols allowed others to see they were outward signs of their dedication to God their devotion to God their pursuit of God in their life at least it should have been unless their other outward actions trumped those and so you have Samson you go back to chapter 13 of Judges and you would see the earlier parts of the story where his mother was barren, could not have a child, and so she prayed to have a child, and the angel of the Lord came upon her and said, you're going to have a child, and he will be a Nazarite even in your womb, which means you have to also be a Nazarite at this moment, and she took that on. He was born. Now, fast-forwarding through his life, you would see certain things that occurred in his life where he did not take on this role appropriately he did the outward signs at least while people were watching but in some of his actions and you could read through the chapters and, and get some of these stories of these tidbits of the information if you will but you would see one he had this strong desire for pagan women women from other tribes and that was forbidden by the the law that they had to be of equal or, or same tribe same belief but he desired pagan women because of that, he journeyed. He journeyed. He had an incident where he passed by a lion, and he had to fight off the lion. And on his way back, he saw a honeycomb in the lion, and he was so tempted. Think about the temptation. He was so tempted by the pleasure of eating that honey that he went into the lion and pulled the honey out by touching the lion. 
strike number one. Another incident where he was at a wedding feast. Now, a wedding feast back in those days was a drunken fest, quite frankly, a lot of drinking. And it doesn't say that he partook, but if you read what it says about him, you will see that he undoubtedly partook of the wine. What he did in that time was not from a sober man. Strike number two. And so the only thing left from his outward signs of being a man dedicated and devoted to God was his hair. And Samson's known for his strength and for his hair. And everybody thinks that his strength comes from his hair, but his strength comes from God. The hair was just a symbol of his devotion to God and God's strength being with him. He still had his hair up until this moment. Now recall that the Philistines are oppressing the Israelites. The Israelites had done evil in the ways of the Lord, and the Lord had put the Philistines over the Israelites. They were oppressing them. And, and Samson was born to start the deliverance. You can actually find that in the scriptures. He was to start to begin the deliverance of the Israelites from the Philistines. The deliverance from the Israelites, key words that I would have you to remember. He was to begin the deliverance. And he had fought them off very effectively. So much that they wanted to find out what gave him his strength. And so he has a relationship with Delilah. And they asked Delilah to find out exactly what gives him the strength. And so she asked him once, twice, three times, and three times he does not tell her the truth about his strength coming from his hair. But then we get to today's passage, and that's where we read about this incident with the hair. He gives in. And notice some of the words here, how she was pestering him. He was vexed into his soul. He just couldn't stand the pressure anymore from her asking and asking and pushing and pushing and pushing. And then she finally says, how can you say you love me when your heart is not with me? Such tender words, such tempting words that come upon Samson from Delilah in this moment. In other words, she's saying, don't you love me? more than you love God? I want us to think about our lives. So I'm going to do a lot of starting and stopping from this story to ours. What about those little pet sins we play with every day? Drinking, lying, gossiping, pornography, whatever it may be, they exist. And in that moment of, I'm going to call it lust, it could be lust over gossiping, that simple voice says, don't you love me more than God in this moment? The pleasure that you'll get with me in this moment, don't you love that pleasure more than God? It's just like we're hearing Satan whisper in our ears. Surely that won't separate you from God. Surely telling a lie won't separate you from God. Surely talking about your neighbor won't separate you from God. Surely, right? It's only this simple little piece of fruit that you're going to eat and partake it looks so good and the pleasure that you'll get from it. Surely, it will be okay. Samson's words here hurt me and I hope they hurt you when we read it from our own perspective. He says, I shall become weak and be like any other man. I shall become weak. Weak from the strength that I have from the Lord. I shall become weak 
and be like any other man. See, he gave in to his lust. He gave in to his desire. He gave in to what the world had to offer at that moment. And we're told in the New Testament to be separate, to separate ourselves from the ways of the world. Yet we don't do that. We find ourselves in a very similar situation. In verses 18 through 20, we see the final straw when his hair is cut. It seems like he finally reaches the point in his life where he believes that that strength is from himself. Because why would you ever allow your hair to be cut if that's the strength that you gain from the Lord? He gives in to her request. And she calls in the Philistines and they shave his hair. And she begins to torment him. And she says, the Philistines are upon you. What are you going to do? He says, I'll get up and fight them off just like I have every other time. I, I, I. But isn't it fascinating in verse 20 that he never recognized when the Lord departed from him. He was on his own. In the midst of this moment, you see, I, th I think we can find ourselves in that same situation. I call it sin, sin, sin quicksand, right? Because you do, you do that first little sin, and you think, I'm, I'm okay, I can come back out. And then you do another one, and then all of a sudden you find that the ground around you won't let go of you. And it lures you into another one and another one, and you're trying to cover it up by lying. You're trying to cover it up by other actions. The next thing you know, you're totally engulfed in the quicksand that sin represents, and it's almost above your head. You can't survive, and you're without any strength whatsoever. Quicksand that we find ourselves in with sin. In verse 21, we see the result. We see the result. We get a symbolic picture. Remember I talked about the symbolism? We get a symbolic picture of what sin leads to and what hell is like. You see, there's two or three things that happen to Samson. First, they pluck out his eyes. It says they put out his eyes, pluck out his eyes. What, whatever words you want to use there, he can no longer see. The light is gone from his life. For me, my light is the Lord Jesus Christ. If I look at this, I see a man that has no light in his life. He's separated from God, and he's placed in bondage, just like we are if we ever don't accept Christ. Just like we are when we do sin, we're in bondage. Then he's placed into the grinder. Now understand, this was a place reserved for animals to grind the meal, if you will. He cannot see. He's bound, and all he's doing is pushing a wheel, grinding, grinding, grinding. Dark, terrible torment is the life that he's living at this point. He's in torment. It's symbolic of what we might face if we're separate from God. But then we get this ray of hope in verse 22. And this, this, is, this is the one verse. If I had a key verse, this is the one. The hair on his head began to grow. Now think of what the hair represented. Now I'm not telling you it was God. God it, it, his strength wasn't from his hair, but that represents the fire that was still within him, God's presence within his life. It was still there in his life. 
He's regaining his strength from God, from heaven above. He's regaining his strength. Now, what we need to understand is in our life, if we've accepted Christ in our lives, we have that same inner strength that we can always rely upon. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, he will never leave nor forsake you whatsoever. Now, to read the rest of the story, we'd have to go on beyond this, but we would see that the Philistines get egotistical and prideful, and they want to celebrate. They bring them before each other, and they go into a great hall, and they want to bring uh, Samson out and ridicule him and mock him, and so they strap him to the two pillars. And Samson does this great thing. This great, great thing that we all should look at. He cries out to God, Lord God, remember me one more time. Remember me one more time. I know I'm nothing but a sin. I know I'm not worthy. I know I wasted all my time. Remember me, Lord. And give me the strength that I need. And he gives him the strength that he needs. And he pulls the pillars down. Killing all of the Philistines that were there. Some 3,000 men. Little trivia. He killed more men in that one action through through God's strength than he did through his entire life. Through that one action. God eliminated the Philistines. This story is a fascinating story. You see, we tend to tell this story a lot to kids. I've read this story to young ones. And we talk about the hair, we talk about God's strength, but we don't talk about the sin that we see in Samson's life. But we should. Because there's so many truths in this. You see, we can see a couple of things in particular. One is we can see a self-reflection of ourselves and the lives that we live, and and how we play with sin in our life, not realizing the strength that we have from God that is only from God to resist everything that's in our lives, all the temptation that's out there, we play with it. We play with it. But we also, when we look at Samson, we get to see a foreshadow of Christ through his life, and that he came and he conquered, and he began the deliverance of Israel in this. My message, and I know it's been a bit convoluted, it's just simple. Don't quit. This is a bad place we live in. And I've experienced some bad stuff this week. And I don't want to go through it again, but I will. If it means I keep on preaching and keep on teaching, I'll do that. We are called to not quit. Not quit anything that you're doing for the glory of God. Don't quit because God won't quit on you. Don't quit in prayer, seeking him at all times, pleading out to him at all times, crying out to him at all times, God, deliver me from this situation that I'm in. God, it's only you that can deliver me from this. Give me the strength that I need to get through this. He wants us reliant upon him. So don't quit praying. Don't quit loving God. That's all he wants. He doesn't want our rituals. He doesn't want our sacrifice. He wants our hearts. Don't quit loving God and really seeking him, pouring through his word. You see, that's how he reveals himself to us. People have shelved their Bibles. and Put them up. Why would you ever do that? Our Bibles need to be out every day. Our Bibles need to be tattered, worn, because we use them so much. 
Don't quit loving God. Don't quit seeking God. Don't quit loving each other. This is a bad place we live in. The hurt and the hatred that exist is unfathomable. got to love each other. Love each other so much that we share our greatest joy, which is Jesus Christ. Don't quit in service. There's so many things that we can do. So many things we can do. Starts right here. I was talking to somebody that used to live here this week. They talked about how Saluda Baptist and Saluda are both special places. We've got to take that specialness out into this world it means we're going to be tired it means we're going to want to give up but we can't we got to keep pushing 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 you see if you don't quit God's not going to quit if you don't quit praying don't quit loving don't quit serving God's not going to quit on you this week I was beaten down pretty bad and I, I, I promise you, Satan didn't want this one preached. All week, distractions came up. I spent the entire morning this morning in prayer. That's all I could do. I came up here ready, and chaos started hitting. I thought the building was going to burn down. Till Dexter and everybody else figured out what was going on. Wayne and Rod, they were all running around out here. But you know what? Even if our building burns down, we're still going to have church. Somewhere, we're going to have church. Don't quit. God won't quit on you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come to you this morning seeking you. Father, I pray that the words I spoke this morning, that you spoke through me, rang true to hearts. Father, I pray that you'd be with each and every person here. Be with those that may not know you. Be with those that do know you but maybe have gone astray. Father, be with each and every one of us. Those that are here in person, those online. Father, speak to us. Be real to us. As Samson cried out, Father, we're crying out to you. Remember us, O oh Lord. Remember us. Strengthen us, O oh Lord. Just one more time. Just one more time. That we may do what you need us to do, that you want us to do, Father. Reveal yourself to us. Father, for that person this morning that doesn't know you, I pray that you would convict their hearts before it's everlasting too late. Father, allow them to feel your presence. Allow them to feel that joy. Allow them to feel the peace and contentment that they can only experience through you. Father, for the person that maybe has gone astray, I pray that you pull them back in. Father, allow them to be as the prodigal son was, seeing you with open arms, running to greet them. Allow them to come back, Father. 
Father, we pray, pray for revival in our church and in our land. We need you. We need you. Father, for just those that might be thinking of, of coming to worship at Saluda Baptist Church, visitors, Father, I pray that they would see that we're a Bible teaching, Bible preaching church. That's all we do. It's your word, Father. We give thanks for you revealing it to us. Father, I pray that you'd be with us this morning, be with each person, move in hearts this morning. For those that need to repent, Father, I pray that you would just be real to them this morning. Father, we love you, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand? morning uh it, it it is so refreshing encouraging to me to see so many folks here remember there's churches out there that have not opened their doors yet we are blessed we are blessed indeed to be able to come into god's house and worship each and every sunday morning every wednesday night every sunday night speaking of sunday night please don't forget bible studies tonight men and women youth and children we have something for the entire family Women, we don't know where you're meeting tonight, but we're going to figure that out. Uh, we will know by 5 o'clock tonight. Pastor Brandon will know by 5 o'clock tonight. Also, for our seniors, we have a dinner this Friday afternoon, Saturday. Saturday. I was thinking it's Friday. Okay, Saturday. I need to look at my calendar a little close, more closely. Saturday at 4 o'clock. I don't know about you all. That seems kind of early. But I can eat early any time. I'm good with that time. Uh, and there might be some special entertainment, I've heard, that is going to be there at that dinner. So if you haven't signed up, today's the deadline. Sign up on the table. We've only got about 21. We need uh, twice that number. Uh, we want twice that number. The service means we can. Come and join us each and every time the doors are open. That's my challenge, my encouragement to you. Come and join us and be in fellowship with your church family. Let, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for blessing us so abundantly. Father, you, you, you're so good to us. You're so good to Saluda Baptist Church, and I thank you for that. I thank you for each and every person that's here in person. I thank you for each person that joined us online. Father, may, may your word ring true to each and every person that's out there, each and every heart. Father, I just pray that you would pour out your spirit among many, among many. Father, give us opportunities as we depart this building, that we may witness to others, that we may share the gospel with others. Father, that is our desire, to share the gospel with as many as we can. Father, as we depart here, please keep us safe, and Father, we just give a safe return at the next appointed time. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.